Hello there, my name is Alden Wokter, and in this video, we're going to look on how to fight properly as the newly improved Iguanodon. Now before we start, while I do have experience with this creature, I wouldn't go as far to say that I mastered the Iguanodon. So if there are any experienced Iguanodon mains, if you have any better strategies than the one I suggest in this video, do feel free to share them. In this video, we'll be going over the following topics. With that out of the way, let's head on to Arsenal. In the first slot we have passive ability. The first ability is bipedal stance. Basically, you are able to stand on your hind legs and you also receive a few other buffs. For sensibilities, we have three options. The first option is family chorus. Basically, when you are in a group full of other hadrosaurs, you will have increased stamina recovery. By the way, I will cover the abilities that are meant to be used in the groups even though they aren't too relevant in this video because I am focusing on solo play. The second option is Retaliate. Basically, when you stand bipedal, you will receive a short time increase in damage output every time you are attacked. The third option is Trampling Feet. Basically, you are about to give somebody the Mufasa treatment. For front limb, we have five abilities. The first one is Arm Slam. Pretty self-explanatory, when you stand bipedal, you can slam dunk some fools and you also causes AoE damage. The second ability, Block, does exactly what the name implies what it does. Perfect for blocking any certain heavy attacks, such as the stomp ability. The third ability, quadrupedal. The fun summary of this, basically when you're on all four, you go more feral. The fourth ability, running start, basically increase your acceleration when you're on all four. This could be helpful when you need to dodge any dangerous attacks. The fifth ability, thumb barrage. A thumb attack that increases attack power with each hit. The only downside with this is you need to be bipedal to use it. The good news is when you activate the ability, you can go from quadrupedal to bipedal. And you stay in bipedal mode until you start running, or when you hit the crouch button again. For higher ability, we have three options. The first one being resilient scales. Basically, increases bleed and venom healing. The second option is a new height called second win. Basically, whenever you receive a hit in combat, you will gain two points in stamina. Depending on what enemies you are fighting, this may help you. I mean, not really much if you're fighting against an Apex, because you probably won't survive too many hits. Basically, don't get hit on purpose. And then third option are just Thick Scouts, that increases health recovery. For leg abilities, we have three options. The first one, Abraced Legs. Basically, when you run uphill, you will ignore the laws of physics and biology. The second ability are Gauntlets, which increases your armor by 20% when you walk bipedal. This ability doesn't really make sense to place it in legs, considering that gauntlets are something you wear on your arms. Pretty sure that the leg protection have their own name, I just don't remember right now. The third ability, Hero Stan. When you land a successful attack on any opponents, you will receive a whopping 25% increase in damage output. Of course, this will only happen after 3 successful hits, after which any successful hits will then refresh in the duration of the ability. Also, is this supposed to be a reference to the Dinosaur 2000 movie? We have 5 options for back limb. The first option is back kick, an ability which is pretty self-explanatory. The second ability is charge, an ability you choose if you want to make things more difficult for yourself. The third ability pivot increases your turning speed when you go bipedal. The fourth ability planted feed, basically nobody can knock you around. The last ability and attack is the standard tail attack, and considering the Iguanodon's size, it actually does quite a bit of knockback. Personally, I can't really reach a conclusion on what abilities are best to equip. It really falls down on what you're fighting and what terrain you are fighting in. One ability doesn't really outshine the others. Sure, some abilities may be more useful than others, but they all kinda have their uses. I will give you guys my experience and opinion on this, however you kinda have to reach a conclusion on your own. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, I, for the first time ever, actually had to give my approval on all three. Honestly, it really depends on what your preferred fighting style is and what you're fighting. I'll put up a list on best suited fighting style and opponents depending on the subspecies, however, if you want the one with best survivability, in my opinion, it is the health recovery subspecies. As for terrain compatibility, honestly, in my opinion, the best terrain for Iguanodon are terrain with a bit of uphills and downhills. 
The reason for this is due to the fact that the uphill and downhills can either help you with getting away from certain opponents or catch up to faster opponents. Considering the Iguanodon's new abilities, the terrain might be your biggest ally. When it comes to fighting low tier, a lone pouncer will never really be a true danger. Sure, if they come at you in a group, all you really need to do is just back yourself into a corner, using a cliff, wall or water. Of course, the latter being more dangerous due to crocodiles or any other semi-aquatics. This goes for other low tiers as well. If there's only one of them, they will never truly be a real threat. Of course, that applies only if you know what you're doing. When fighting low tiers, it's pretty much pointless to try and chase them. Take a defensive position, and then let them come to you. Against low tier, I recommend the following abilities. As you don't really need to worry about overpowering them, all you really need to worry about is your timing. And probably your ability to be able to predict your opponent's movement. Against mid tiers, it's a bit different. On paper, you should be able to defeat them in a head-to-head -head clash. However, they do have pretty devastating attacks themselves, so you shouldn't really just tag every hit. You will find that most of your battle against mid-tiers will turn into a battle of turn radius. While the Gondon aren't really the best when it comes to turn radius, it is by no means any slouch. This is also where terrain comes into play. Remember braced legs? If the fight starts moving uphill, you will find out that many opponents won't be able to outrun you. Against opponents who can't really overpower you in a head-to-head -head clash, that is pretty much a death sentence. Case in point, in a fight against mid-tiers, it should favor you. You have somewhat the same speed, so keeping up with them shouldn't be too big of a problem. All you need to do is to force them into a position where they can't run, and then just straight up overpower them. Against Apexes, yeah, you can just forget about trying to overpower them. I mean, you can try, who am I to stop you? However, the result will be pretty much the same. Even if you try to do hit and run, it won't really help you too much. In a 1v1 situation, you're just one opponent, and keeping up with your movement is not impossible. Even if you get a few hits in, it won't really do much as you need to keep moving to keep yourself from getting hit. And if you want to start moving slower to land a stronger hit, then remember, it will also be easier to hit you. And let's just get this clear. Compared to how many attacks you need to kill an Apex, an Apex needs far less attacks to land in order to kill you. In other words, it's a question on how many attacks can you dodge while also landing ones yourself, can you even outmaneuver the Apex on your own? Answer to that, it's a possibility, but extremely difficult, unless you're fighting a noob. The absolute best strategy is to team up with someone. After all, two dinosaurs are stronger than one. Of course, I'm not too happy about that strategy, but a win is a win, I guess. So to summarize, as for the choice of subspecies, again, I think it's whatever, but if I really had to give an answer, then try out the health recovery. For the choice of terrain, try to have a terrain that has some downhills and uphills, it might help you. As for arsenal, again, it really depends on the enemy and the terrain you're in. In fights against low tiers, take a defensive position and then let them come to you. Against mid tier, force them into a position where they can't run and then overpower them. Against apexes, if you're solo, well, probably don't, but if you absolutely want to, then try to tail ride or do hits and run and see how far that will get you. With that, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!